two of my favorite friends in comedy that uh, I've known for like 27 years. So uh, the next gal coming to the stage, and I think I can call her gal because we go way back. <laughs> you may have seen her on uh, Nick Mom at Night or the Arts and Entertainment Network. She is a nurse by day and a comedian by night. Please, let's have a nice round of applause for my friend Nancy Norton. Keep it going for George. Your love for George McClure. Checking you guys out. You look great. You look very young. Of course, like last week I was in Florida, so <laughs> distorted. I thought that was a myth, you know, an overgeneralization. The old people going to Florida. I got on the plane in Denver to fly to Miami, and I realized I'm the only one who did not pre-board. <laughs> Anyone needs a little extra time getting to their seat may come to our gate now. And the walkers were sparking. They spark. I'm a nervous flyer. I'm a very nervous flyer. I don't, I don't, ooh, I don't believe in the physics of the plane. That's my problem. I don't understand that. I don't get how that, how does that work? Everyone says it's the flat at the bottom and the curve at the top. That's all that, that's all it is? There's a flat at the bottom and a curve at the top? Did you know that's how it works? That's all there is to it. It's a shorter distance, straight line at the bottom, longer distance around the curve, air particles separate going around the top, reducing the atmospheric pressure above the plane, sucking the tonnage into the air. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Everybody knows it's our prayers <laughs> and our mass consumption of alcohol that hold that vehicle over Phoenix. I don't, I don't drink on earth, just 37,000 feet. I'm very frugal and sober on planet earth, but when I'm up there, it's like, oh yeah, $7 for a gym beam? Bring it! <laughs> I love those cute little bottles they give you on the plane. Aren't those adorable? I always ask for a little paper sack to put over my Jim Beam. I know in the sky. I recycle. I bring a little bin and just kink. A little recycle bin. I save them. I collect them, actually. I Wind chimes. I'll be selling wind chimes back here by the bar. There's nothing like the tinkle, tinkle, tinkle of a Jim Beam wind chime to remind you why you have no moisture in your mouth. <laughs> so I am a registered nurse. Let's give it up for the healthcare people. Healthcare, we love you, healthcare people. Actually, I have to confess, I got out of nursing uh, for the same reason a lot of people get into it, to save lives. <laughs> it's better this way. I'm not a, not a good nurse. I'm actually a very, I am a good nurse. I'm intuitive, but I'm disorganized, you know what I mean? I, I know what's going on, but I just, have you ever run down a hallway with a big syringe of morphine and just fallen on it? <laughs> It's kind of a weird day. <laughs> All your call lights are on, and you just think it's pretty! <laughs> Ding! Did you hear that? Another angel got his wings. <laughs> I feel like I drank three wind chimes. <laughs> Fired, but you know, <laughs> not for that. I had to let myself go. Have you noticed it's all about them? That's part of the problem for me. I like attention. Look what I'm doing. I like it. It's all about them. My arm is broken. My chest is hurting. My cervix is dilating. Me, 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 me. And that's just the doctors, you know. Deal with the patients. What about my needs? I didn't even want to be a nurse. My mother is a nurse, and I'm codependent, so I, 
and became a nurse. She never said to me overtly, Nancy, be a nurse like me, I would have argued, right? No, it was subtle manipulation through gifts and toys. I figured it out later. I looked back on the Christmases, you know? Other girls got dolls, dolls that wet, dolls that cried, and I had this doll that choked. <laughs> Anybody have that doll, Heidi Heimlich maneuver? <laughs> she comes with a little toy white light and chicken bone. <laughs> I'm kidding, the chicken bone is sold separately. You know they get you. Are there any nurses here by any chance? Any healthcare people? Seriously? Oh, hi. Oh, welcome. Thanks for being here. What, what, well, that is wonderful. So, is your mom a nurse? No. Is your dad an alcoholic? Just a guess. I don't know. I have found that to be a common denominator amongst the healthcare providers. Either your mom's a nurse or your dad's an alcoholic. I had the combo platter. Yes. I'm half scotch, half water. My mom hates that joke. Sweetie, your father's not an alcoholic. He just buys bourbon by the case because it's economical. He's an alconomic. My dad's an alconomic. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. It's a tough job. I really do think, well, every job is. I mean, here's my problem. You know they have bring your child to work day and my problem is I bring my inner child to work day, like every day. And it's stressful, it's a stressful job. And I don't know what you do, most of you, in your daily living, but has anyone in your daily job run up to you and handed their hand in a baggie to you? I mean, it's like, here, here's my hand in a baggie. I'm like, oh, thank you, sir. Good idea. Way to put your hand in a baggie. Oh my, look, it's a hand in a baggie. You know, there's a part of me that's like, Aah. the other part of me is like, turn it upside down to see if it stays in, like on the commercial. Hand does not come out. This is a good baggie. I mean, that's a hard day. I, I, yeah, and I think I think he drank a few wind chimes when he was working his skill saw, which was not a good plan. This is actually this guy. Was, this is a sad, but kind of has a happy ending. So try to stay with me. This is a hand in a baggie coming at you. Drunk guy, here you go, and And that wasn't the worst thing that happened to him that day. That's the... so he's okay. He's refinishing the basement, kind of begrudgingly. All right, I'm gonna do it. You know, so he's flop shoot. Well, yeah, he said shoot. Shoot. That would be my mother if she cut her hand off. Shoot. She won't cuss. Well, if it rhymes, she will. Hell's bells kept from a keys. <laughs> Mother! She's crazy. This guy. Shoot, shoot. If my mother cut her hand off. Oh, shoot. Cut the hand off. Who needs anything? How's your cocktail? Do you need me to freshen, honey? You had a hard day at work. Don't worry about my hand. I'll get it later. Don't worry. I am fine. Look, I can take my pulse visually. 90. I'm okay. It's 90. I'm not even shocky. Come on. You need some Fritos or something. Don't you want a little chip dip? This guy, okay. This guy, ant flop, shoot. I'm gonna say he said shoot. Horrible day. I, your hand is on the floor. Now he decides in that moment he doesn't want to go on without Lefty. Lefty was my favorite. You know, I don't know. He instantly reaches for a tool in his work area to just end his life immediately. I know this is harsh, a little bit harsh. Suicide? Serious. I'm sorry. But have a plan. This guy. No, he just like reached for the nearest tool, which was a a baggie. <laughs> I like it. A baggie could do it. Just a few puffs. Just 
<laughs> good, good, good answer. Anybody else? A saw. Oh, a sawzall. Wow, you're aggressive. A sawzall. Yeah, this is a guy that likes deconstruction. Just goes through everything. The nails, the two by fours, the tile, the whatever. This guy, no. Who said Sander? Somebody say Sander? That would take a while. Grit. <laughs> Dang it. I do the grit humor. Did you say pliers? <laughs> You're ambitious. Nail gun was the correct answer. Did we have a winner? Sorry. Which is, a, you know, a gun with nails, so it makes sense, I guess. But I, you know, I rented a nail gun once because I thought I was uh, butch. I mean, I thought I was butch enough to build a shed. Like, I was going to build a shed. Seriously, I thought I was going to build a shed. And I started to build a shed. I really, I started to frame it myself with a nail gun that I rented. And it turns out that those, those guns uh, are not made for women's hands. You have to really stretch to reach the trigger, and then uh, you can't let go as fast as you should. <laughs> you know? I was spraying squirrels in my backyard. <laughs> It's twitching! It's twitching! <sighs> I'm a vegetarian. Vegetarian. That was for the jack-o'-lantern you ate the day I carved it. The day. Don't eat anything with a face, that's what I say. Anyway. This guy... Okay, that's serious business, putting a nail gun into this area. Bam! Uh. And it didn't kill him, okay? It didn't even make him dizzy. Because they were just one-inch nails. I know. I know what you're thinking. Finishing nails, they should do the job. Right? Is that what you were thinking? Some of you? Nobody was thinking that? He kept going. 19 nails he had in his head. And a hand in a baggie, and I'm not supposed to laugh. Bam, ow, bam, ow, wow. How many, I mean seriously, would you keep 19? That's, that's perseverance, that's dedication. I'd like to see a little more of that out of you people. Finally, well he would have kept going. But the clip ran out, and you can't reload with one hand, am I right? I mean, that's... I don't care if you know how to work a sawzall. You're like, that is some fancy footwork. So he finally called his wife to the basement. Sharon! Could you bring me a baggie? I don't know, quart size! And some ice! And a hat! You gotta have a hat. If you have nails half in and half out of your head, you do not go to the ER without a hat. Uh, people will put notes on them. They're jerks. Handyman for hire, people write. Rude, rude people. Somebody crosses that out and writes handless man. Boss kitten. It's... <clears throat> Well, I know you're concerned, and I'm, uh, I, feel, I feel that from you, by your laughter, that you're very worried. And the good news is, though, and I, again, I'm not, you know, this is why I'm not a nurse. The good news is, they did reattach his hand, and he, he got some use out of it. Uh, <clears throat> sadly, they couldn't get all the nails out of his head. I don't know if they couldn't. Okay, I don't know if they couldn't, or just a really tired ER doctor who just hammered him in and puttied him over. <laughs> We all do it. <laughs> Sweetie, that's not true. I have a singing mom in my head at all times. She doesn't speak in a normal human voice. She has to sing that. Sweetie, 
Rise and shine, every day is a happy day. Every ding dang day. That's how my mom cusses. Every ding dang day. And you know what I mean by ding dang, sweetie. My mother. Just once you want to hear her say, hi, how are you, and really mean it. Hi, how are you? Don't tell me your feelings. I can't handle those, okay? <laughs> He's got some anger. <laughs> I love her. She has no vices. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of weird. Okay, she used to smoke, but only when she was pregnant. <laughs> so, you can't judge that. <laughs> I wish that was a joke. <laughs> my mom spoke through every single pregnancy. There were a lot of them. Every photo I have of my mom, she's got a cigarette in her mouth with one of those baby shirts on with an arrow, just kind of. <laughs> my dad right next to her, Budweiser arrow. <laughs> you can't tell whose water is gonna break first. I don't blame her. It was the 60s, you know. The, the Surgeon General just came out with that warning in the 60s about this, you know. Look, they put the little warning on this package. Look out. Smoking while pregnant will lead to low birth weight. Do you think that deterred any women at all? Do I want a huge baby for this labor? Or a teeny tiny? A teeny tiny. My mom was four fingers smoking by the third trimester. <laughs> I just realized that's just three cigarettes. It's four fingers. It's only three cigarettes. Hey, sweetie, could you build me one of those Marlboro ventilators to smoke at night while I'm sleeping? Just kind of like a bellows that blows into my face. Nine months later, bink, baby fell out. Catch up. We'll throw it back. We were very small children, all of us. But we were so small, my mother wore us as jewelry. I know the twins were the earrings, and I was a pendant. A codependent, would that make sense? It was a, it was a codependent. Actually, um, tonight I'm, I'm launching a new product. I'm a, little, I'm a little sheepish about it. I'm a little embarrassed, but at the same time, I am codependent. And I, I came up with this idea to sell codependence that you wear to, uh, you know, overcome your codependency. So some of you may relate to this, but I have, I have them on now. And I brought, I brought prototypes with me. So look, they're dog tags, very stylish kids. It says, I honor myself on the front, on the back, if you don't mind. <laughs> Just saying, if you, if you want to empower yourself, you read the front first. If you don't mind, I honor myself. You don't flip anyone off, that's just the back of the thing. I don't know, I was trying to come up with some other ones. Let me know if you have some good codependency sayings. I, I welcome information. I also have another one that says, I'm in the present moment for now. I think they're gonna sell like hot cakes, don't you? Do you feel it? Do you feel they're just gonna take off all over the nation? Yeah, you get yeah, one person. Yes, it's me. I feel it. I'm codependent like you. Well, I was just raised that way, you know, to have my mother's feelings for her. She's nervous right now. I'm also just super dorky because uh, we were raised by a wild pack of wiener dogs. We had wiener dogs. We are wiener dog people. You know who you are. You can, what, once you have wiener dogs, you can never be cool. And I know, it's sad, but you can't. And it was my job to jog the wiener dog. And they have legs this long in the back, in the front, a little bit shorter. I don't know why God made them that way. They get up any speed at all. Their butt actually starts getting in front of them. Have you seen that phenomenon coming down the highway, the sideways street sweeping wiener dog? He sees his own butt, he thinks it's a race. Like front end, hind end, front end, hind end, who's gonna win? 
Pretty soon it's just spinning out. And it's just a wiener dog butt coming right at you. Which I think you'll agree is not a very efficient attack animal. Who's that gonna scare? Maybe that one guy coming out of the manhole for lunch. Next week he's in therapy. Doctor, it looked like a cyclops with a goiter. Is that too graphic? Let's say it's neutered and it's just a cyclops. With a lazy eye, would that be funny? I have a lazy eye, so I'm allowed to talk about them. I do, it's lazy, although my mother says, it's not lazy, it's just not motivated. It kind of drifts, my right eye kind of, you know, I keep following it. It looks, yeah, I meet twice as many people as the rest of you. I just park by sound. Just, I'm there, get out. So, if you have a red Nissan, I am sorry. I apologize for that right up front. So, I try not to pick on my mom too much, because I'm now, be, you know, becoming her as we do. And I have a, I have a child. Yeah, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah, really. He's nine. I'm 53. Thank you! 53! Nine-year-old! <clears throat> 44 year spread. Yeah, I'm just saying his first words, hot flash. That's nice. He sees my neck turn red, he puts himself in a timeout. No, Mom. But it, it, it's a... a I don't know what to say. I'm just, oh, I'm so moved by having this person in my life. He is adopted. He's from the country of Nepal. You know, it's far away. And we have so much in common. It is unbelievable. I don't know how we found each other, but we did. And it's, we just get each other. He's writing my jokes for me now. He's funnier than I am, which is kind of irritating. <laughs> he actually writes jokes. I don't do jokes. I just dance around and tell my little stories. He actually wrote this joke. What do you see when aliens get diarrhea? Mysterious crap circles. It's pretty good, right? For seven. Yeah. I'm an artist. I was an art major for several years, and he is here for several years. He is, uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it did happen. I was welding a sculpture one day, and I realized I've got to make a living. <laughs> Went right to nursing school. <laughs> So, uh, he likes to draw, though, is my point. Is he, I like to draw, he likes to draw on his legs to make them look like mine. So that's nice. <laughs> spider veins, spider veins, goes wherever a spider can. Spins a web any size, maps of blue all over your thighs. Look out, here comes a spider vein now. She's got a spider vein now. He's got a spider vein now. It's driving you insane. Unattractive. <laughs> Ladies, do not be afraid of your spider veins. Don't have them removed. Have them labeled for your local highways. <laughs> it's a free GPS on your thigh. Sure, you have to drive naked, but it is worth it. I've got the I-25 corridor right over here. Got your I-70 interchange up into I Wyoming on I-80 and I notice no one's taking the scenic route to Jackson Hole no more. <laughs> That's too graphic. That's way too graphic. That is a town. That is a tourist destination. I don't know what you're thinking about. I'm just saying the Grand Tetons are not so grand, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sensing it's almost time for closure. So. I think we'll have closure, you guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for supporting this foundation. And thank you again, healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, staff, medical records, data inputters, all you people. I love you. Have a good night. Nancy Norton, let's hear it for her. Nancy Norton. Right there. Fun stuff.